Welcome to the quickest, most hardcore road-going Lotus Elise ever to emerge from the Lotus factory. Welcome to the Cup 260. Just 30 of these very special Elises will be built. Its bare numbers are 250 brake horsepower, 188 pounds foot of torque, 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 3.8 seconds, and a dry weight of 852 kilos. There is carbon fibre from splitter, to seats, to roof, to engine cover, to rear wing, and then a titanium exhaust to top it all off. When I knew I was coming here today, I went up in the loft at home and dug out a few things. These are, well, they're original sketches and brochures and things. You can just pick up from dealers, but I had these pinned up. You can still see the blue tack on the back of them and off on my desk at school because I was slightly obsessed by the Elise. And it's amazing really to think how far the car has come. The fact that we're still in this machine that was sort of, you know, 22 years ago, um, merely, well, still drawings on bits of paper. And here we are now. It's come a long way. I loved its simplicity, its looks, its lack of weight, and the fact that it cost relatively little, and of course that it had the famous Lotus badge on it. Other than pure power, it seemed to be offering almost everything I could want in a car. And in many respects, the Elise hasn't changed in over 20 years. Its essential character is still exactly the same as that Series 1 that I had stuck to my desk. But is it still relevant and exciting today? And can you really make an Elise that's worth the £60,000 Lotus is asking for this one? It certainly looks a million dollars in its championship gold paintwork, which is a tribute to this photo of Colin Chapman sitting on the front arch of a similarly painted S2 Esprit. Talking of Colin Chapman, we're at Hethel, which is the World War II airbase that Colin Chapman bought for the company. How lucky a Lotus to have this right on the door so they can come out and test cars whenever they like and they can know things like the fact that this car is two and a half seconds quicker around this track than the Cup 250 which is a huge chunk around what is roughly a sort of 90 second lap for this car. So how have they made the Cup 260 so much quicker around a lap? Well, in typical Lotus fashion, it's not through extra power as the 260 only has increases of four brake horsepower and four pounds foot. The time has fallen off for two main reasons. Firstly, the new AD08R tyres from Yokohama. Not only are they a new compound, but they're now 10mm wider than the tyres on a Cup 250, and the fronts are a massive 30mm wider than a standard Lees. The second reason is that this has a whopping 44% more downforce than the Cup 250. The downforce has mostly come from the enormous rear wing, lofted high by beautiful billet aluminium supports. It is essentially a slightly truncated version of the one found on the Wild 311. And the reason they've been able to put a bigger wing at the back is thanks to the vents in the front arches just there, relieving pressure over the front. And it's nice because it means that you, you know you're in something special when you're in this car because the whole time you can see just in those beautiful front arches, you can see those gills like something from a, a shark, almost worth the £60,000 on their own. So given this car got more grip from the tyres and more grip from the aero, you might think that it's, well, all grip and no fun. But actually this has to be the most progressive Elise I think I've ever driven. You can just grab it by the scruff of the neck. It's amazingly faithful. A few of you might be confused or even put off by the Cup 260's fixed hardtop roof. Obviously it needs it for the aero to work properly, but part of the appeal of the Elise is surely that the roof is removable. I agree, but then, after a while driving it, it occurred to me that this isn't an Elise. This is a continuation of the original two generations of Exige, the ones with the four-cylinder motors. Thought of like that, I think it makes much more sense. This is our Nitron Springs and dampers, which hasn't been used on cut versions of cars before. And it's also, it's, it's got lower ride height, but it's also got more rake to it to give it more front-end grip. Still no limited slip diff, so when you go into corners, when it does break away, you kind of, you don't want it going too far. You just want to hold small angles, really. Otherwise it can 
so it'll get away from you a bit, but it's just such a fun car. Over the years, the engines have changed from Rover K series to Toyota, and some cars like this one have even found themselves with superchargers. Radios, air conditioning, carpets, carbon fibre airbags, ABS and electric windows have all found their way into Elise's for better or worse. But one thing has remained largely unchanged, the chassis. This has been the heart of the Elise for what, 22 years. Some people say, why haven't they changed it? Because they haven't found anything better. This is only giving away four kilos to the carbon chassis of an Alpha 4C. It's very simple, but actually still very technologically advanced. It is made from pieces of extruded aluminium, and these pieces can be thinner because they are bonded by glue, which doesn't weaken the metal like welding. And of course, the whole point of that chassis out here it's a lightweight. Now some people think that that will make a car, well, flighty, like some sort of ping pong ball, I suppose. But I mean, it's still nearly 900 kilos curb weight. And last time I looked, yeah, that's, that weighs more than a cow, and I don't think of a cow as small and flighty. What it means is you can have a car that doesn't rely on too much assistance. So you can feel it more, it doesn't have to be disguised because the weight is just low enough that you can manage it without all sorts of gubbins. This is Windsock Corner. Really feel the arrow through here. 44% more than the Cup 250, which is 180 kilos at 155 miles an hour. This is the first time I've used this beautiful gearbox down here with all the exposed workings like the back of a mechanical watch. It's a much chunkier shift than I remember certainly from the very early leases which felt pretty flimsy to be honest. So can an Elise be worth £60,000? Yeah, it probably can. In this world where hot hatches seem to be climbing in price and you get more and more specialised versions of those with more power and more grip and more aero. I think this, it justifies it. It's a very special thing. Everyone goes on about Lotus steering. It's true. It's absolutely true. Just to have that waiting be able to feel exactly what the front tires are doing how they're loading up to the chicane here flick it one way down the brake back the other <laughs> what a fun car the setup is of course adjustable we're about a third away from full stiffness for the track setting and then it's about halfway for the road setting so it can go a lot softer talking of which we should probably go and try this on the road Here all day. <laughs> a single knob on each damper easily adjusts rebound and compression through a range of 24 clicks, and Lotus suggests somewhere in the middle for the road. After having, to be honest, too much fun on the track, it was early evening by the time we hit the road. But the Elise arguably felt even more alive, wriggling around over the bumps and cambers of B roads. And yes, it is worth driving on the road because when you drive on track, you tend to drive flat out. Whereas here, you get to just enjoy the weighting of the pedals and the gear shift. And that steering comes alive even more. It definitely works as a road car as well. Yes, the big rear wing might look a little silly on the road, but in the same way that with a GT3 RS, I, I love the idea you can turn up to a track day, beat 90% of the other cars there, and then just potter home something very cool about it. Oh, and in case there was ever any doubt, yes, the little Elise, in whatever form you can afford one, feels every bit as essential, exciting and relevant in today's motoring landscape as it did in 1995. In fact, arguably more so.